Okay, today we are talking about solving quadratic equations by factoring. Um, keep in mind the emphasis is on the word solving. This is not a lesson in factoring. Um, I will somewhat talk about how a problem is factored, but if you need more review in factoring, you should go to a previous lesson or video and um, or even work in IXL to review that. Okay, but before we move on, or as we move on, let's say, I want to make sure there's three things that we're going to discuss that you know, and that is, number one, what is a quadratic equation? We're going to answer that. The second is, what is the zero product? That's not how you spell product. Ah, poo. Zero product. Uh, most books call it property. This book is calling it principle, so I'm going to stick with principle. And then last, what are the steps to solving uh, quadratic equations? Okay, so we're going to go through each of those, make sure, and then I'm going to do lots of examples and show you how to check that. Okay, so first and foremost, what is a quadratic equation? Um, standard form, we kind of talked about that in the first part of this chapter. Um, what makes it an equation? Well, let's go back to standard form, okay? That's when you write your exponents in order, ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, what makes it quadratic is the fact that I have a 2 as the highest exponent. We've talked about this before. This is a second degree polynomial because that's my highest exponent. Now, what makes it an equation is the fact that I now have an equal sign, and I have it equal to zero is what makes it set, uh, what makes it in standard form. So all the problems that you've done thus far have only been expressions, and now we're dealing with equations. Um, an example of a quadratic equation would be something 3x squared minus 5x minus 10 equals zero. Uh, it could be, that would be in standard form. It could be something uh, such as 2x squared minus 8 equals 0. Okay, those are examples of quadratic equations. Okay, next we have the zero product principle. Okay, and our zero product principle says that if a times b equals 0, if you have two things that when you multiply them together give you 0, then Either A has to equal 0, B has to equal 0, or both. So I do want you to write that. A lot of books say or both, okay? Um, so when you multiply two things together, if your product is 0, then one of those things has to be equal to 0. And that's what we use to solve quadratic equations. That principle is going to be used over and over again. So let's talk about our steps. First off, uh, when you're solving a quadratic, this is different from how you've solved linear. When we had linear, we would put the variables on one side and the constants on the other. But now, we always want to rewrite the equation, and basically any equation from here on that's not linear, in standard form. So standard form basically means, uh, as we've said, highest exponent first, setting everything equal to zero. Okay, so they're in decreasing order. So you're moving all the terms to one side and you have zero on the other side. Okay, after you do that, you're going to factor completely. That's what we practiced this uh, past test. Then you're going to apply the zero product principle. And what you're going to do with that means you're going to uh, be setting each factor containing a variable equal to zero. It doesn't look like an equal sign. There you go, equals zero. Then you're going to solve the equations that you get. So every factor that you set equal to zero, you're going to go solve it, and you're going to see. And then you're going to check it. And this is what I want you to write here. There's two ways to checking. Uh, they're in the directions below, if you forget. But one of them is by substitution. And I want you to write substitution or graphing utility. And uh, I'm actually going to talk about both. Most of the time I'm going to show you graphing because I want you to get a good picture of what it means um, when we're checking or solving these equations. Okay, 
So to start off with, use factoring to solve the problem. So I have to, I already have it in standard form. That was the first step, okay? The second step is to factor it, okay? So to factor this thing, um, the nice thing about it, uh, it, you might pause at this point and go try to factor it yourself and then come back and check, okay? But I know it's going to be x and x, and I'm looking for the factors of 15 that subtract to give me 2, and that, of course, would be 5 and 3. This is negative, so I need my 5x to be negative, okay? So that's the factoring step. The third step is to set each of these factors equal to 0. And then you solve each equation. So I'm going to solve this by adding 5 to both sides. So x equals 5. And then I, of course, would subtract 3 here. And that would tell me that x equals negative 3. So the answer to my problem, you can write it like this. x equals 5 or negative 3. Or you can write x equals 5 or negative 3. That comma is a way of using or. Okay. And one time, and I really hope that y'all remember this because we have talked about this so many times. Okay. If you remember how to check it. Okay. All right. If you choose to use substitution, then you would check it by plugging 5 squared minus 2 times 5 minus 15. And finding out, does that equal 0? Or you would put in, actually you would do both, because you want to check and see if both answers work. 2 times negative 3 minus 15, and does that equal 0? Now the other way is you can go to the link and use on my website, or if you have your own graphing utility, you can put this equation in your calculator, and instead of, well, at the point where it says y equals. So instead of 0, you would go to the graphing part and say y equals this thing, and when it graphs it, it looks like that. And so, from that right there, what you want to understand, or how do you know what the solutions are? These numbers here are right there. You can't see that very well. Let me do that. Right there and right there are what those numbers are, okay? When you're looking at the graph, one, two, three, four, five, it crosses at five, it crosses at negative three. So the intercepts, the x-intercepts of your graph is also the solution to your equation. So we'll be looking at it at that each time that we do it. Uh, just know that you can do either one, and so therefore you always know whether you got the problem right. Okay, look at 24. Um, it's not in standard form, so I have to bring the 45 over. So that means when I bring it over, I would be subtracting. So it's going to be x squared minus 4x minus 45 equals 0. Pause. See if you can factor this correctly by what we've just learned. Then turn it back on and see if this is what you got. It would be x minus 9 times x plus 5 equal to 0. Then my next step is to set each factor equal to 0. So x minus 9 equals 0, x plus 5 equals 0, add 9. So this is that step of solving. x equals negative 9, and here I'm going to subtract, and x equals negative 5. So you can just put the or in between and box it, okay? Now when you graph this, there are two methods of doing it, but I find it easiest to go and graph this equation. The one that's, when you have it set equal to zero, that's when, when you set, instead of zero, you put y equals. And so to graph it, if you graphed it, oops, that is not what I wanted. I need the clicker here. Okay, when you graph it, it's looking like that. And so negative, 9. That don't look like negative 9, does it? That has positive 9, so I have entered the wrong graph there, so I'm actually going to take that away. Actually, let's do this, because that's not the right graph. So, um, actually, you can go back and check it, so that one you would probably be better off checking it numerically, because... Um, Alright, 
we're good to go. Okay, I'm sorry about that interruption, but now I figured out what happened because I don't have anybody in here. Telling me that 0 plus 9 is not negative 9. Um, it is positive 9. So it's positive 9, and when I come over here to click on my graph, then I have positive 9 over here. This is my positive 9, and that's my negative 5 because that was 6. So negative 2, 3, 4, 5. So that was the correct graph. I just had somebody walk in and got a little disturbed. Uh, distracted, excuse me, not disturbed. Okay, moving along. Let's do some more examples. 2x squared plus equals 5x. Again, uh, first thing we do is set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. Okay? I write it like this. That's an x squared, that's an x. They cannot be combined. So 2x squared minus 5x equals 0. And you don't want to know about that. All right. And this time I have two terms, and we've talked about factoring again. Pause. See if you can factor. Come back. Two terms. They're either the difference of two squares or they have a common factor. These have a common factor of x. And I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. 2x minus 5 equals 0. So I'm going to add 5. And 2x equals 5. And then divide both sides by 2. So I'm going to run out of room. So I have x equals 0 or 5 halves. Uh, I think 5 halves is easier if you want to get the decimal. That decimal is 2 and a half. So does my graph cross the x-axis at 0 and 2 and a half? And it does. Those are where my answers are. So that to me, like I said, is an easier way of checking. All right, look at number 36. x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 0. It is in standard form. Pause. Try to factor. Come back. This one, because 9 is a perfect square, I recognize that this is a PST. So that's how it factors. And when you set each factor, it's the same factor twice. So I only have to do 1, subtract 3. Uh, you don't have to write that minus 3. Let me take that away. That's in a different... Uh, and x equals negative 3. So what does that look like on a graph, or how would this one be graphed? This is kind of building up to the uh, later chapter section in this chapter. But when you graph that, look at the, what it, the graph looks like. x equals negative 3, well, that's exactly what that point is right there. So that's where it touches the x-axis, and that is the x-intercept. Okay, two more, and then we'll be done. Um, again, x squared minus 49, pause. See if you can factor. Come back. And hopefully you factored it too. x minus 7, x plus 7 equals 0. Set each factor equal to 0. x minus 7 equals 0. x plus 7 equals 0. This time I'm going to add 7. It's supposed to look like a plus sign. And that means x equals 7. And this time, I'm going to subtract 7. So x equals negative 7. Again, or. It's not and. It can be either or. And we're going to check it with our graph. So I'm going to put the graph on. Um, and I put this on here purposely to know when sometimes when you put it in it, you don't have to see the whole graph. All that matters is that you see where it crosses the x-axis, which is why I prefer this method of using a calculator and graphing calculator instead of the other method. So you can see negative 7 and 7 are actually the roots of your equation. Okay, the last problem that we have, look, you'll look at it, is a little bit different, okay? Um, it's already in factored form here, but the problem is it's not equal to 0. So it always has to be equal to 0 for you to use this zero product principle that we've just talked about. So what you have to do here is foil this out, if you remember that. 
So the first term's x squared. Outside is going to be plus 4x. Inside is minus x. And the last is minus 4. And that equals 14. So, and of course, these two combine, giving me with x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 14. So from there, I still have to set it equal to 0, so I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides. And that gives me x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals 0. So again, we're at that factoring stage. Pause and then come back and see if you factored correctly. Uh, I'm looking for factors of 18 that have a difference of 3 because this is minus. So x and x, 6 and 3, I need a positive 6 and a negative 3. So that's how it factors. And I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. x plus 6 equals 0. x minus 3 equals 0. Subtract 6. x equals negative 6. <coughs> Add 3. Or x equals 3. So hopefully by now you can tell me that if I put it in my graphing calculator or use the link from my calendar, um, then you know that the graph should have be crossing at x, the x-axis at negative 6 and 3. So we look at that. There's negative 6 and there's your 3. So there you have solving equa quadratic equations by factoring. We checked each time by graphing. Um, your assignment is to do 21 to 49, which is all of these problems. If you have any question, please come see me.